Hi everyone, FizzFop here, and welcome back to round three of Wally Wood's 22 panels that always work. I'm gonna start this video with the panel I've teased in the first two videos, and I hope it's really worth the build up. But first, and yes, in life there's always a but first, isn't there? I'd like to take a moment to address a question that's come up a few times since the first two videos have come out. A few people have asked what were the influences outside of comics that affected Wally Wood's artwork. There's at least two biographies on Wally Wood that I know of. Um, I haven't read either one of them, so anything I tell you is sort of going to be speculation on my part. But I believe a major influence on Wood's art is the street photography movement that was really popular in New York City in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. And uh, let me put up some examples here of, of uh, some street photography. And you can see for yourself that a lot of these photographs look like Wally Wood's panels. As cameras got smaller, cheaper, and easier to use, people in major cities began walking outside and just started taking photos of the world around them. And photographers experimented and great things came out of it. Uh, right after World War II, as Wood was becoming a professional artist, photography sort of came into its own as a art form. Art galleries began doing photography shows. Photographers began making prints of their photographs and selling them. And also there was a lot of magazines that were like photo magazines. By the way, these photographs I'm showing you, most of these are from photographers who predate or coincide with Wally Wood when he was first developing as a cartoonist. So you can sort of see the similarities with Wood's art in these photos. Now, with all that behind us, it's time to start talking about this panel. But first. Yep, in a life there's always a but first, and sometimes there's even two but first. I have to explain what we're looking at, and it starts with panel 14 on this reference sheet. Panel 14 is what Wood called the L shape with a silhouette. Believe it or not, this is one of Wood's go-to panels. For the most part, Wood combines the silhouette of a person with the silhouette of an object that is in the form of a capital L or boomerang shape. It could be a doorway, a window, a broken pipe, anything that falls in that sort of broken L or boomerang shape. It's normally a very simple panel. It puts emphasis on the background and the shape of the figure, and Wood has a lot of variations on this. He'll separate the person from the L shape and put them in different planes on the uh, drawing. And sometimes there are also hard silhouettes and sometimes there are soft silhouettes and they could appear in varying degrees of silhouette. And other times there may not be a silhouette at all and it's just a regular drawing, but the L shape is still there. And here's some examples of what I'm talking about. The big takeaway from this is that it's an L shape with the full body of a person. When I came across this drawing, I quickly noticed the L shape of the wall in the foreground. And then I noticed that the little girl sitting there is a reverse L shape. And this was the first time I noticed that Wood puts people in the L shape. And I thought that was pretty cool that he did that. And uh, then I noticed the little dolly laying next to her. And then it was that moment when I started to realize, wow, what's the hell's going on here? And then it was like being in the movie, The Usual Suspects. All of a sudden, this was my Kaiser Soze Kobayashi moment. The whole picture came into crystal clarity. So I started looking closely at this panel and I noticed that the dolly is an L shape. Wood added an arm sticking out to break up the L shape, but the doll with the, the leg kicked out is clearly an L shape. And that's when I realized that this whole panel is made up of freaking L shapes. The blue shading in the background is an L shape. The midground layers are L shape. The buildings are L shape. Even the exposed building frame in the background is made up of multiple L shapes. The smoke from the smoldering rubble is a series of L shapes. The shadows and highlights on the walls are L shapes, and it's L shapes upon L shapes upon L shapes. Even the sky is an L shape. Crazy, right? I know that we're dealing with uh, the abstract, and the abstract is very subjective. Uh, I expect 50% of you to totally see this and go, oh yeah, of course, there's L shapes there. And I expect half of you not to see it at all. And you'll be like, what is he talking about? Is he on drugs? When you think about it, it's amazing. Uh, all this detail and thought that was put into this panel and 
this panel is merely a single panel on a page full of panels. So to put it all into perspective, this panel really shows the genius, talent, and dedication of Wally Wood as an artist. Our next panel is called Diagram slash Eye Level. Basically, it's two full figures with at least one of them in profile. This is sort of a standard comic book panel because it serves several purposes. It can be used for conversation or action. It can also be used for establishing who the characters are or what the characters' intentions may be. Let's take a quick look at this panel. This panel is at the beginning of a story and what Wood does with it is that he establishes the relationship between the characters. Uh, their body language tells us everything we need to know, which character is giving orders and which character is taking them. Shading and depth is a big part of comic book art and art in general. Another way Wood handles this is with this technique. This panel is called Side Light or Top Light. I believe this is another one of those techniques that Wood learned from photography. You can see it used a lot in cinema as well, especially in those old film noir movies of the 1940s and 50s. One film that comes to mind is the uh, Orson Welles film Citizen Kane. In that film, they use this lighting technique quite a bit. Whether you're working in comic books or film or some other medium, you have a major problem to overcome. Your viewer is looking at a flat, one-dimensional surface. And to make things look more realistic, you have to make your drawings look three-dimensional. One thing you can do to get your art to look more three-dimensional is by adding the side or top light. And in Wood's case, he adds a light from above and a side light that comes in heavily from one direction. And this creates shadows and highlights on his characters. And that's what's giving him the three-dimensional feel. Notice how the light source in these drawings are coming from one side. And in addition to the three-dimensional aspect, the clashing of light and dark helps create mood in the panel. In art terms, what Wood is doing is called chiascuro. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's an Italian word. It basically means bright and dark. Uh, sometimes this is often referred to as dramatic illumination is another term it gets used. This is another one of those art techniques that goes back to the Renaissance. And uh, in the last video, I talked a little bit about tenebrism and dark backgrounds. And chiascuro usually goes hand in hand with tenebrism. One extremely useful variant to the top and side light is the bottom light. And this is an old horror film technique. You can see it a lot in those old universal horror films like Dracula and Frankenstein. And you can think about this as the technique used when uh, someone sticks a flashlight under their chin while they tell a ghost story. It's the same kind of effect. And here's a really interesting comparison. Wood does two versions of the same drawing and one is normal and the other is underlit for the dramatic illumination effect. And with the light source coming from the bottom, it gives it a spooky and unnatural feel. The next panel is called Reflection. In my search through Wood's art, I couldn't find a lot of examples of reflection, but I did manage to find a few and what I discovered was pretty interesting. The most obvious reason for using reflection is the symbolism behind it. Now here's a Wood example from The Spirit. Uh, the character is reflecting on his life and his situation while looking at his own reflection. Another wood reflection technique is that he can make the scene inside the panel look bigger. I know that's not a great explanation, so I'll go into a little more detail. In this panel, wood reduces an alien massacre into a single panel. You can see the alien firing his weapon, but you can also see his victims in the reflection of his helmet. And what might have taken other artists several panels to accomplish, wood does so with a single panel. In these other examples, Wood establishes a navy. He doesn't go into any detail drawing battleships. He simply establishes their presence just by their reflection in the water. And he does the same thing with the sun in the sunbathing panel. It's a reminder that the sun is part of the scene and it's the reason why the character is there. Wow, I can't believe that there's gonna be a part four. When I started this, I had no idea this video was gonna be anywhere near as long as what this video series turned out to be. I wasn't even gonna plan it as a series. I thought it was gonna be like 15 minutes or something and wow, was I wrong there. <laughs> Sorry about that, we'll finish it up in the next video. 
thank you for watching, and I hope this video is a really good tool for helping you make your comics better. In addition to paying tribute to Wally Wood and his art, one thing I hope that you can walk away with from this video is that there's other mediums that tell stories in similar ways to comics, and you can learn from them. There's photography, classic art, and cinema, just to name a few. Please remember to hit that like button and leave comments down below, especially if you're a comic artist, writer, or creator of some sort, or even if you're just somebody who makes comics for fun. Your insights will be greatly appreciated by all those who peruse the comment section. Well, that's about it for me. I hope you're around for part four. Stay super, everyone. Bye.